Now, fair Hippolyta, our nuptial hour draws on apace. Four happy days bring it another moon. But oh, methinks how slow this old moon wanes. She lingers my desires like to a stepdam or a dowager. Long withering out a young man's revenue. Four days were quickly steep themselves in night. Four nights will quickly dream away the time. And then the moon, like to a silver bow, new bent in heaven, shall behold the night of our solemnities. Go, fellow street, stir up the Athenian youth to merriment. Awake the pert and nimble spirit of mirth. Turn melancholy forth to funerals. The pale companion is not for our pomp. Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword, and won thy love, doing thee injuries. But I will wed thee in another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with reveling! <laughs> Happy be Theseus, our renowned duke. Uh, thanks, good Aegeus. What news is with thee? Full of vexation come I with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Oh, stand forth, Demetrius. My noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander, and my gracious duke. This man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with my child. Thou hast by moonlight at her window sung with feigning voice, verses of feigning love, and stolen the impression of her fantasy, with bracelets of thy hair, rings, gauds, conceits, knacks, trifles, nosegays, sweetmeats, messengers of strong prevailment, of unhardened youth. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart, turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness, and my gracious duke. Be it so she will not hear before your grace consent to marry with Demetrius, I beg the ancient privilege of Athens, as she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall be either to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law immediately provided in that case. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid, to you your father should be as a god, one that composed your beauties, yea, and one to whom you are but as a form in wax by him imprinted, and within his power to leave the figure or disfigure it. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. In himself he is, but in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I would my father looked but with my eyes. Rather, your eyes must with his judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made bold, nor how it may concern my modesty in such a presence here to plead my thoughts. But I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires, know of your youth, examine well your blood, whether if you yield not your father's choice. You can endure the livery of a nun, for I to be in shady cloister mewed, to live a barren sister all your life, chanting fate hymns to the cold fruitless moon. Thrice blessed they that master so their blood to undergo such maiden pilgrimage. But earthly or happy is the rose distilled from that which withering on the virgin thorn grows, lives and dies in single blessedness. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord, ere I will my virgin patent up unto his lordship, whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Take time to pause, and by the next new moon, the sealing day betwixt my love and me for everlasting bond of fellowship, upon that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or else to wed Demetrius as he would, or on Diana's altar to protest for I austerity and single life. Relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander, yield thy crazed title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. 
Do you marry him? Scornful Lysander, true, he hath my love, and what is mine, my love shall render him. And she is mine, and all my right of her, I do estate unto Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his, my fortunes every way as fairly ranked, if not with vantage, as Demetrius's. And, which is more than all these boasts can be, I am beloved of beauteous Herbia. Why should not I then prosecute my right? Demetrius, I'll avouch it to his head, made love to Nader's daughter, Helena won her soul, and she, sweet lady, dotes, devoutedly dotes, dotes in idolatry upon this spotted and inconstant man. I must confess that I have heard so much, and with Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof, but being over full of self affairs, my mind did lose it. But Demetrius, come, and come, Aegeus, I have some private schooling for you both. For you, fair Hermia, look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens yields you up, which by no means we may extenuate, to death or a vow of single life. Come, Hippolyta, but cheer my love. Demetrius and Aegeus, go along. I must employ you in some business against our nuptial and confer with you as something nearly that concerns yourselves. With duty and desire, we follow you. How now, my love? Why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? Be like for want of rain, which I could well be keen them from the tempest of my eyes. Die me, for aught that I could ever read, could ever hear by teller history. The course of true love never did run smooth, but either it was different in blood. Oh, cross! Too high to be enthralled, too low! Thoros Miss Graffit in respect of years. Oh, spite! Too old to be engaged, too young! Or else it stood upon the choice of friends. Oh, no! To choose love by another's eyes. Or, if there were sympathy and choice, war, death, or sickness did lay siege to it, making it momentary as a sound, swift as a shadow, short as any dream, brief like the lightning in the colleague night, that in a spleen unfolds both heaven and earth, and ere a man hath power to say, behold, the jaws of darkness do devour it up. So quick, bright things come to confusion. If then true lovers have always been crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. Therefore, let us test our trial in patience, because it is a customary cross as due to love as thoughts and dreams and sighs, wishes and tears, poor fancy's followers. A good persuasion, therefore, hear me, Hermia. I have a widowed aunt, a dowager, of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house remote seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee, and to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, then, steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood a league without the town, where I did meet thee once with Helena to do observance to a morn of May, there will I wait for thee. By all the vows that ever men have broke, in number more than ever women spoke, in that same place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. Keep promise, love. Look, here comes Helena.
Godspeed, fair Helena. Whither away? Call you me fair? That fair again, unsay. Demetrius loves your fair. Oh, happy fair. Your eyes are load stars, and your tongue, sweet air, more tunable than laugh to shepherd's ear. When wheat is green, when hawthorn's buds appear, sickness is catching. Oh, were favour so, yours would I catch, fair Hermia, ere I go. My ear should catch your voice, my eye your eye. My tongue should catch your tongue, sweet melody. Were the world mine, Demetrius being baited, the rest I give to be you translated. Oh, teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns would teach my smile such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers could such affection move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty, would that fault were mine. Take comfort. He no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Before the time I did Lysander see, seemed Athens as a paradise to me. Oh, then what graces in my love do dwell, that he hath turned a heaven unto a hell. Helen, to our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night, when Phoebe doth behold her civil visage in the watery glass, decking with liquid pearl the bleated grass, a time that lover's flights doth still conceal, through Athens' gates have we devised to steal. And in the wood where often you and I, upon faint primrose beds, were wont to lie, empty am our bosoms of their counsel sweet, there my Lysander and myself shall meet, and thence from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet playfellow, pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Keep word, Lysander, we must starve our sight, from lover's food till morrow deep midnight. Helen, adieu. As you on him, Demetrius dotes on you. Oh. <sighs> How happy some or other some can be. Through Athens, I am thought as fair as she, but what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all but he do know. And as he airs, doting on Hermia's eyes, so I, admiring of his qualities. Things base and vile, holding no quantity, love can transpose to form and dignity. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind, and therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. Nor hath love's mind of any judgment taste, wings and no eyes figure unheedy haste. And therefore is love said to be a child, because in choice he's so oft beguiled. As waggish boys in game themselves forswear, so the boy love is perjured everywhere. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eye, he held down oaths that he was only mine. And when this hail some heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolved, and showers of oaths did melt. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood... Will he tomorrow night pursue her? And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But here in me and I to enrich my pain, to have a sight thither and back again.